The following program is not intended for preschool age children. Parental discretion is advised. Major funding for Don't Look Now is provided by the Mabel Louise Riley Foundation, a Boston-based foundation with special interest in children and youth. Additional funding is provided by public television stations and the Corporation for Public Broadcasting. Good morning. As you may be aware, last week at this time, the television program Don't Look Now conducted an unofficial funding drive. Uh, public television wishes to apologize for this to our regular viewers and donors, but at the same time to thank uh, all those who did send in their money. <laughs> Let me assure parents that this money will be used for educational, that is to say, informative programming. We're also grateful to our new younger viewers who sent in so many quarters for our use. Hey, those are my quarters. It's my turn. <laughs> In conclusion, we at this time are happy to present another episode of Don't Look Now, which has become as popular as many commercial programs. Get off that video game. I said it's my turn. Sorry about your golf game, Mr. President. Live from Beantown! <laughs> Hey, Matthew, this is the camp director's supper. Take it to his cabin, will you? And whatever you do, don't take the top off of it. Why not, Riley? Well, the camp director's been complaining lately that I've been overcooking his meat. Let's see how he likes it raw and spraying. <laughs> oh, wait a minute, Matthew. You may need some of this tomato juice, OK? <laughs> All right. Oh, 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 wait a minute, Matthew. Probably want to have this gas mask. <laughs> Great, you're all set. See you later. <laughs> hey, Tina, what are you doing just sitting around reading newspapers? Just sitting around reading newspapers so I can win one of those T-shirts we keep giving away. You can't win one of those T-shirts. Why not? Because you're on the show, so you can't call in and win. Anyway, we have an introduction to do, okay? So why don't you just tell the viewers at home about all the great comedy on the show and the t-shirts we give away and those fantastic rock videos and that we have kids' views on everything and we have that educational segment. I wonder who's going to get educated this week, Tina. I hope it's you. Anyway, we have an introduction to do, so why don't you just do it so we can get the show started, huh? I think you just did, Bunny. <laughs> oh. <laughs> well, then I guess I'll go and collect your paycheck. Thanks. <laughs> Why am I walking this plank anyway? Well, you're a kid, right? Right. And you paid half price for this cruise, didn't you? Yeah. Well, this is the halfway mark of the cruise, so walk the plank. <laughs> <laughs> no. I was saying, the Transylvanians were a very tricky group of people. Miss, miss. Yes, Tina, what is it, dear? Speak. There's a rumor going around that you're not assigning any more homework. Is that true? Why, yes, Tina, that is perfectly true. I'm not assigning any more homework than usual. Now, as I was saying, the Transylvanians were a very tricky group of people. Can you imagine how difficult it is to go through life with your front teeth hanging out of your face? I'm home, dear. Sorry I'm late, but I had a meeting at the office. Here's your dinner. Oh! What's wrong with her? Didn't you tell her I had a meeting? Oh, yes. I told her you had a meeting with the secretary. Did you happen to mention that it was the secretary of state? I didn't think it mattered whose secretary it was, Dad. I think the whole affair is quite revolting. Oh, dear. Louise. Don't touch me. <laughs> Louise. Jack, where are you 
go with all those newspapers. I just finished reading them all so that I can answer the questions to our contest and win a t-shirt. John, you can't win a t-shirt. Why not? If I win one, I might be able to sell it. John, you can't win a t-shirt because you're on this show. How are we going to phone in if you're working? I mean, I just read all these newspapers for nothing. At least you know what's going on in the world. Which reminds me, Tina, do you think President Johnson should send more troops to Vietnam? Johnson? Vietnam? John, where did you get those newspapers from? Off the living room set. They've got tons of them lying around. John, those are proud newspapers. They're all over 15 years old. They're older than you are. I mean, I just read all these. Oh. Look on the bright side, John. At least you'll know what you're doing no. in your history class. <laughs> Dad. Mm-hmm? Dad, when you were my age, how did you do on dates? Well, you may not believe it to look at me now, son, but when I was your age, I did very well on dates. Really? Oh, wow. Tell me about it. Uh, dates, hmm? Well, let's see. There was this one girl. She was 13. Oh, Dad. I meant dates. Like, how do you remember when something important happened in history? Like, when did Columbus discover America? Or when did the War of 1812 start? History, huh? Hmm. Well, I have to admit I wasn't ever very good at history. I was too busy dating girls. When was the War of 1812, anyway? Dylan, you're so cute when you play dumb. Dumb? I thought that would just make a great contest question. It would if this were 1812. Because we get all our contest questions out of last week's news. And you could win a Don't Look Now t-shirt if you're the first person through with the answer to... Ta-da! Congress just created a holiday in January. Who is the holiday named after? Hmm, a tough one. But if you know the answer, you can call us up here at the studio at 1-800-932-1005. That number again is 1-800-932-1005. But if you live in Massachusetts, you have to call 617-576-900 because the 800 number doesn't work in Massachusetts. And while you at home are rushing to your phones, we at the studio are going to watch OXO sing Whirly Girl. Hello? Oh, yes. I want the T-shirt from your studio. No, okay. Um, what's your name? Bradley Schultz. Uh-huh. Where are you calling from? Giddings, Texas. Uh-huh. Um, do you have an answer for us? Yes. What is it? Martin Luther King. That's absolutely correct. You want a Don't Look Now t-shirt. Congratulations. Thank you. Um, Dylan wants to speak to you, okay? Okay. Hello? Um, hello? Um, do you know who Martin Luther King was? Yes. He, can you tell us about him? Um... Well, he was a he was a black civil rights leader. He fought prejudice for many years, nonviolently. Um, how old are you? Twelve. That means you're in sixth grade or seventh. Seventh. All right. Um, it's been nice talking to you, and congratulations. Thanks a lot. Mm -hmm. Bye bye. Uh, bye. <laughs> hey, Violet. Have you seen my list of the ten most poisonous plants in the forest? I left it here somewhere. Nope. Hey, that's it. No, it isn't. That list is in the camp director's handwriting. My list was in the camp director's handwriting. He's the one who gave it to me. Oh, and I thought it was a list of ingredients for a new salad now that he's on his vegetarian kick. <laughs> hey, if you won't tell him, I won't. Look, Mom, there's a caterpillar in my salad. Do you want it? John, what on earth would I want a caterpillar for? I don't know. It just looked like you enjoyed the one you just ate with the lettuce. John, <laughs> pass Mother your glass of water, would you please, dear? How I ask me hearties? Daddy, as she goes, and you walk the plank. Before I do, I was wondering if I might get a photograph of you as captain of this ship. You want to get a photograph of me? Oh, yes. I think that the pirates are so very dashing. Oh, well, let me give you my best sign. Oh, yeah, that's great. But the light's wrong. 
Why don't we switch places? Then the light would be just right. All righty. How's that? Oh, now that is terrific. You got me. But could you back up just a little bit? Okay. To here. Oh, back up just a little bit more. Okay. To here. Great. But just one more. Step. Okay. To here. Oh! You know, I don't think it's fair that we can't win T-shirts. I know. I promised one to my boyfriend. That's nothing. I promised one to the toughest kid in school. And if he doesn't get it, I get it. What are you two so worried about? I promised one to Lisa. Are you still after that girl, Dylan? I must say, I admire your persistence. Yeah. Oh. Hi, guys. What's up? Hi, Jocelyn. Hey, Jocelyn. We were just wondering how to get our hands on some T-shirts. Just buy them off Bunny. You know the script lady? Is she selling them? Uh-huh. I overheard that she was given a bunch. Great! That means I'll be able to live to see my 13th birthday. <laughs> that is, if I can get any money. I know what you mean. But how do you make money in television anyway? Sure. Well, if you're public television, you ask for it and people send it to you. Mm. Tina, they tried that last week and look what happened. Mm. Public TV kept it all. Well, at my father's television station, they make money by selling commercials. Yeah, and that guy at the beginning of the show said that we're as popular as commercial television. Right. He did? Yeah, I didn't hear him. No way, I don't like that guy since he took our video games away. Right. Who cares? That's the way we're gonna raise money for our t-shirts. We'll sell commercials. Oh, really? And who'll buy them, Tina? The same people who buy commercials. People who want to see themselves in television. You know, like the used car salesmen during the late movies. Only we'll sell commercials to kids. Good idea, Tina. I know. Well, I hope you kids like Brussels sprouts. Oh, I hate them. Well, you're going to have to learn to like them, dear, because your father just bought some. But I thought you did all the shopping, Mom. And Dad just bought the stocks and bonds. Yes, but he also dabbles in commodities, dear, where he just bought 28 tons of Brussels sprouts. But that's just on paper. Well, you're right, dear, except when you cannot sell them because the bottom has fallen out of Brussels sprouts. They're delivering all 28 tons right here tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> this is just a sample. <laughs> Last week, we sent the camera out to get you kids at home telling us your favorite jokes. Well, you can do that, too, because we're selling this space for a very low price. So, if you want to see your very own face on television, telling Dylan, your very don't own... don't say face... that. Why not? I thought it was a pretty good idea. It's a very good idea. Dylan, it's so good. Public television might start charging us money to do the show. Right. On second thought, as a public service, we're donating this space to you, our favorite viewers, for free to tell your favorite Lady joke. With the, uh, pickup truck, and she has penguins on the back of it. And the cop pulls over and says, why don't you take these penguins to the zoo? And she says, okay. And then the next day, she Cop pulls over again. Didn't I tell you to take these penguins to the zoo? And he's and she said today I'm taking them to the to the beach. Why did the rocket lost lose its job? Why did the rocket lose its job? Because it got fired. Why did the robber take a bath? I don't know. Why did the robber take a bath? He wanted to get a clean getaway. What did one dresser say to another one? I don't know. What did one dresser say to the uh, the other one? I see your drawers. Okay, there was a guy, so dumb, and he went to a football game that he thought the quarterback was a rebate. Well? Well, nothing. That bad, huh? Worse. They won't even listen to my sales pitch. Why not? I thought everyone wanted to buy commercials. Oh, they do. But as soon as they hear it's public television, they don't want to hear any more. They say nobody watches it. Now what are we going to do? I couldn't help but overhear your plight. And if you don't mind me saying so, I think you're going about this the wrong way. What do you mean? Yeah. I mean, instead of selling commercials, you should use this time to sell things. You mean make our own commercials? Exactly. Yeah. And I happen to know that I'd make a very good commercial director. And so if you could only come up with a product, then we could make a bang-up spot. 
and maybe even win an award. I've always wanted to win an Oscar. Johnson has an idea here. But what are we going to sell? Um, well, there is my old bike, you know, with the bent frame and the rusty that's spoke. That's perfect. Only from now on, it's a stunningly sleek machine. No, it's not. Yes, it is. If you want to sell it, it is. Listen to her, John. I think she has a good idea for once. Boy, am I ever hungry. I think all the fresh air is giving me an appetite. Yeah, I and mean, the smell in there is taking it away again. <clears throat> Shut up and eat, Tina. Ha <laughs> <laughs> ha! You walk the plank. <laughs> wait, wait, the sun has just arrived. It's my ransom. They've agreed to pay my ransom. Let me see. Well, well. Ha <laughs> ha! It's not your ransom. It's a letter from your doctor. He suggests you need exercise. Says you better take up swimming. Ha <laughs> ha! So, you walk. Stop lying. <laughs> ah, John. I've been looking all over for you. John, I'm going to be going to the country club tomorrow. I'd like to make a good impression. I'd like you to wash the car for me, please. Oh, I would, Dad, except I have to do this math assignment. Well, I spend all day fixing figures. Tell you what, let's make a deal. I'll do your homework for you if you wash the car for me. Okay. I've already done the first five, so all you have to do is write out, I must hand in my math assignments on time, another 995 times. <laughs> oh, thanks. Here it is. <laughs> what do you think? Oh, oh no. Can't show that old wreck in my commercial. But this is the bike we're trying to sell. Precisely. If we show that, we'll never sell it. Never. We'll show my nice new European 12-speed. That will look good in the commercial. That way, when the customers roll in, we'll sell them John's old scrap heap. Good idea. Hang on there. That's dishonest. Aren't there rules about truth and advertising? Truth and advertising are two words that do not belong together. You know, like jumbo shrimp. Of military intelligence. My grandfather was in the military. He was a general. See what I mean? <laughs> oh, John, you ought to sit right here. Why? Because the seat's got your name on it. It must be because you spend so much time here. Hey, John. <laughs> yes, Jocelyn? Speaking about seats, my father once gave money to Harvard to set up a seat. Must have been a toilet seat. Oh. <laughs> hey, John. Yes, Matthew? The kids on my school bus are really tough. All the seats have been ripped up. That's nothing. On my school bus, all the seats have been ripped off. You know, I took the school bus once. You're kidding. I would have never thought you stooped so low. Yes, Tina. I took the school bus once because I liked the color, but my parents made me give it back. They promised to buy me one of my very own instead. I suppose they did. No, I soon realized that everyone took those yellow buses and that it was impolite to drive up in your very own. John, no, no, no. You know, John? Yes, Dylan. I used to ride my bike to school. What happened? Got stolen. Didn't you lock it up to anything? Of course, but what I locked it to got stolen as well. When I get my new bike next week, I'm gonna lock it to the school. Good idea, Dylan. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Have you seen Dylan anywhere? Yeah, Jocelyn just dragged him out of here, mumbling something about tennis and Daddy's country club. Figures, we're trying to do a television show here, and those two are playing tennis. I can't believe this, but I have a feeling they're going to regret it. Why? The educator's looking for them. Uh-oh. Uh-oh is right. <laughs> Dylan, your backhand was simply awesome. Oh, thanks, 
Jocelyn. Uh, you know, I'm really glad you invited me here to your country club. Oh, of course. Oh, excuse me. Oh, hello, Mrs. Rockefeller. Oh, sorry. Dylan, how about getting something cool to drink? Oh, sure. I could go for a milkshake right now. Oh, there you are. Did you say milk? Did she invite you here too, Mr. Educator? No, I didn't. Have you ever wondered how milk goes from cow to carton? No. Well, you're going to find out. Oh my goodness, this doesn't look like my country club. Where are we? This is what's called a dairy, my exceedingly wealthy friend. But why are we here? Well, the workers here could use a few extra hands today. Ours? Oh, watch out for those cow pies, Jocelyn. Cow pies? I don't believe our chef ever made a cow pie. This is the milking parlor. You can probably guess what goes on here. Ah, oh, so sorry, princess. But the animals are so spoiled looking. Not to worry. That's where you and Dylan will help out. Bob Folk here will show you what to do. Before you milk a cow, you have to wash their udder. First thing you do is just push the end of the hose to dispense the water. Make sure the water's warm before you start. Cows don't like cold water on their udders. Okay? and use just enough to take the dirt off of the teeth. Oh. Good job. Now the next thing we have to do is sample for abnormal milk. The first thing you do is grasp the top of each teeth gently and then close your fingers in succession Draw three or four streams of milk. Check the screen to see if the milk's normal. And then go on to the next tea. The cows are actually milked automatically with this device. It pumps the milk from the cow into these glass containers. Then, by a process called pasteurization, the milk is heated here to 145 degrees Fahrenheit for about 30 minutes. That destroys bacteria and makes milk the healthy beverage it is. Hmm. And I always thought the aging of fine wine was fascinating, yet milking is rather remarkable. Yeah, but didn't he say something about cow to carton? Ah, yes. Step right this way. The hundreds of cows at this dairy give enough milk for thousands of quarts to be packaged and sent to stores every day. And that is how milk goes from to you. And I always thought chocolate milk came from brown cows. Oh, come now. I meant, I once knew a guy who thought that. Oh, Dylan, you are charming. Cheers. Okay, John, since you read all those prop newspapers, you can do the contest. I can? Yep. Gee, thanks. It's time for our second contest. You can win this great Don't Look Now t-shirt by answering a simple current affairs question. Right. If you've been reading real newspapers instead of prop ones, this will be easy for you. The envelope, please. Da -da 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 -da. Um... Last week, there were a lot of demonstrations in Europe. What were the people demonstrating against? See, simple. Now, if you know the answer to that question, call us here at 1-800-932-1005. And if you're the first caller through with the right answer, you can talk to us here, live, on air. The number again is 1-800-932-1005. But if you live in Massachusetts, the number to call is 617 Five seven six nine two zero zero, but that's only if you live in Massachusetts now. And while you're doing all that phoning, we'll watch Donna Summer sing 
unconditional love. All right. Hello? Hello, this is Allison Wallace. Excuse me, what's your name? What? What's your name? Allison Wallace. Oh, hi, Allison. Do you know the answer to our question? Yeah, the deployment of missiles in Germany. Okay, you got the right answer there. You just won yourself a Don't Look Now t-shirt. Okay, hold on a minute. Let John talk to you, okay? All right. Hi, Allison. Hi, John. Um, uh, what do you think about um, the deployment of missiles in Europe? I don't know too much. Oh, you don't? No. Well, how old are you? Nine. Where are you calling from? Chatham, New Jersey. Hmm. So you don't really know much about it, huh? Yeah. Hmm, well, what do you think of the show? I like it a lot. Hmm. Well, thanks a lot. Well, okay, keep watching the show now, okay? Yeah. Bye. All the kids at school say I'm a wimp and a nerd. Oh, son, I wouldn't worry too much about that. They used to say the same things about me when I was a kid, and look at me now. <gasps> What's the matter with him? Oh, apparently all the kids at school are calling him a wimp and a nerd. Oh, Dylan, you mustn't pay any attention, dear, when the children call you a wimp and a nerd. Of course you're not. Not at all. You're exactly like your father. Oh, no. <clears throat> now, all we have to do is decide who's going to star in my commercial. It's my bike. I'll star in it. No, no, you're the wrong type. What do you mean, wrong type? To sell this bike, we need someone whose face the public will trust. He should be tall and blonde and good-looking. Hmm. And he should ooh sincerity. Now, who do we know? Dylan! Yeah, but how are we going to get him to do something like this? Right, he's just too honest to even consider selling my bike to some unsuspecting buyer. Mm. Simple. We just find his weak point and exploit it. Lisa! That's his weak point, but how? Simple. I'll just promise that I'll get him a date with Lisa, and he'll be putty in our hands. Can you get him a date with Lisa? Don't be ridiculous, John, but he won't know that until after we shoot my commercial. Oh, you're sneaky. Where did you learn to be so underhanded? I think I inherited it. Remember, my family is very, very rich. How can we forget? <laughs> A fire drill. Miss, miss. Yes, Matthew, speak. What would you do if the school was really burnt down? Cheer! <laughs> Cheer! <laughs> Hey, 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 stop using so much ketchup on your food. You know it's not good for you. Violet, we know the food's not good for us, and it tastes lousy. That's why we put so much ketchup on it. Oh, hey, stop that. I want you to shut up and eat. Go ahead, eat. Oh, there you are, Dylan. We were wondering where you'd got to. Hmm. Hi, Tina. Jocelyn. Hi. Hi. Do we have a proposition for you? No way. The last time I agreed to do something for you two, I ended up in a sewer. Well, I promise you, this job doesn't stink. In fact, it should give you a very high profile. And I happen to know girls like high-profile guys. Yeah, but the girl I like is a TV star. But, Dylan, think about it. In all those magazines you see at the grocery checkout, who do TV stars go out with? Other TV stars. And we, Dylan, are going to make you a TV star. Because mm. we're going to put you in a commercial. Yeah, sure, and the moon is blue. No, really. And not only that, if you agree to do this commercial for us, then I can promise you a date with Lisa. How can you do that? Let me put it this way, Dylan. Money talks, and my family has lots of money. I've always wondered why you talk so much. Come on, Tina, this is no time for petty squabbling. Okay. Now, Dylan, we've got work to do. <laughs> but, Mom, why can't you just ground me for a while? All I did was play hooky for one day. I'm sorry, John, dear. This is for your own good. Now, walk the play. Sure, sure, go on. Matthew! 
you. Why did you chase the cat out of the litter box? Look at the mess on the floor. I needed the newspaper so I could win a T-shirt. Oh, well, if it's one of those from that new program, Don't Look Now, I can guarantee you it's going straight into that box to replace the newspaper. Now, the script is the most important part. But how are we going to make my old wreck sound good? Easy. Just describe your bike to me. Well, it's got loose spokes. Hmm. We'll call those finely tuned racing wheels. What? Come on, John. If they're loose, you can probably pluck them and play a tune. Oh, you're right. But the tires are bald. Okay. We'll call those smooth racing tires. True. One color. No, two-tone. My bike, which will be seen in the commercial, is two-tone. But mine's only got one color. And rust. And that makes two. Very good, <laughs> Tina. Drop handlebars. But they're not. Have you ever dropped them? Yeah. Then they're dropped handlebars. <laughs> Posture molded seat because you've been sitting on it a lot. Very good, Tina. It should really be posterior molded seat. But I think posture molded sounds better. I'll buy that. Gosh, this is really making my old wreck sound good. I don't know if I want to sell it anymore. John, do you want to live to see your 13th birthday? <coughs> right. Uh, I want to sell my bike. <laughs> hey, Dad, can I go down to the arcade? No, you may not. The kids down at the arcade are a bad influence on you. They're nothing but a bunch of punks. But, Dad, they're exactly like me. And that's exactly my point. <laughs> Ma'am? Yes, Tina, what is it? Speak! Is it true that the classrooms in this city are overcrowded? Why, yes, Tina, it's perfectly obvious, isn't it? You have only to look around you to see that this classroom is far too crowded. Oh, well, I'd like to do my part to help, miss. Good show, Tina. So it help if I left? Oh, yes, Tina. You can do your part by leaving this classroom and going straight to the principal's office. <laughs> Wouldn't it be neat to be like Jocelyn? Nope. I mean, wouldn't it be nice to have a million dollars for a day? Why? What would you do? Well, I'd probably put a little of it in the bank, you know. Maybe go out and buy a stereo, maybe a go-kart, ten-speed bike. Well, that's have what John would party, do with a million dollars. Have another big What party. would you do? Get my hair because it's so long. I think I'd buy whales and reside in every castle there is there for a month and uh, maybe take over the crown of England. <laughs> I'd save some and put it in the bank and I'd give some to charity and I'd probably buy some decent clothes and I don't know, buy a car and a house and something for my mother and father that they've always wanted and something that my brother would appreciate for a change. I'd go and buy a hotel and have people pay a whole bunch of money to stay in it so I can make more millions. If somebody went up to you and handed you a million dollars, what would you do with it? I think I would freak out if I spent. Um, I'd buy everything I wanted. And then I'd probably put it in the bank for college. I don't know, just have fun. <laughs> and from there, I might buy Europe or even go into Asia. I'd take it and just spend it, just go out shopping all day, buy a car, buy a house, buy jewelry and clothes and everything. Buy a boat and motorcycles. I'd move to an island that nobody knows about, and I'd start my own little colony. And then I'd come back here and set up some banks, and uh, let's see. I'd buy, I'd buy every school in the country. I'll run home and never come back to school. I'd put it away for when I needed it, and I'd retire and use the money. And what would you use the money on? My kids, if I had kids, and my wife, and necessities. The first thing I would do is I'd probably buy some new skis, and then I'd buy a car, and then I'd put the rest in the bank and save it for, like, college and get interest and everything, and help my parents out on loans and everything. Put half of it in the bank. Probably put most of it in the bank, and then just do some for spending, and put the rest in the bank. I'd buy all the banks in the world with it like that at all. Be 
Getting rich isn't all easy. They're the servants to worry right, about. Right, Jocelyn. But right now, you have to worry about another phone in competition. I do? Yep. Oh, well, here goes. What happened yesterday to upset the president's game of golf? Right. And if you know the answer to that question, and you're the first caller through, you can win this neat Don't Look Now t-shirt by just calling 1-800-932-1005. Now remember, the 1, then the 800, then the 932-1005. But if you live in Massachusetts, you have to call 617-576-9200 because the 800 numbers don't work in Massachusetts. And if you're our lucky caller, you can talk to Jocelyn here, live on air. Why me? Why not? Anyway, while you're calling in, we thought it would be a good idea to watch Lionel Richie sing all night long. Hello? Hi. Hi, what's your name? Tammy Powers. Oh, hi, Tammy. Do you have an answer for us? Yes. Um, yesterday, a uh, uh -huh. truck crashed through the fence at the golf course where the president was playing, and they held a hostage in the pro shop. You're absolutely right. Congratulations. You won a Don't Look Now t-shirt. Okay, here's uh, Tina to talk to you. Hi, Tammy. Hi. Where are you from? Beckley, West Virginia. Beckley, West Virginia. Oh, so what do you think of our questions? Do you think they're too hard or too easy? No, they're not that hard, not if you read the newspaper. <laughs> That's true. If you read the newspaper, it will be a little bit easier for you. Yeah. But thanks for calling. I mean, you know, we, don't, we get a lot of calls, but I guess you were just lucky. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, congratulations, and see you later. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye. Hey, that was odd. Ah, oh, there you are, Matthew. You're here to learn how to play a musical instrument. A musical instrument? You mean like a violin? I've always wanted to be in a symphony orchestra. Or a trombone. I can picture it now. Matthew Flynn at Carnegie Hall. Wow. Uh, don't go buying a tuxedo just yet, Matthew. You're about to learn how to play the harmonica. I guess you have to make your way to... Carnegie Hall, gradually. Gee, that was great. But who are you? I'm Pierre Beauregard. He's been playing the harmonica for 15 years now. How'd you like to play along with me? Who, me? Yeah, you can do it, too. I hold it in my hand this way. You can do that way, or you can hold it in your hand this way. If you draw in, you get a sound. If you blow out, you get a sound. Well, why don't we try drawing in together and see if we can play a draw note together, okay? That's right. Now, let's try a blow note. That's right. Now this hand can wah wah, and I'll cry just like, just like a little baby. Okay, here we go. Excellent. Pierre, do you think I'm ready for the big time? Oh, I think you are, and I do mean big. Matthew, you've just become a member of the Cambridge Harmonica Orchestra. The group is taping this bow diddly ditty for a record it's making. You know, Matthew, an instrument like the harmonica was first created hundreds of years ago in China and brought to Europe in the 1700s. Eventually, the harmonica made its way to America. And though this orchestra may seem unusual, harmonica orchestras, some even larger than this one, were popular in the 1920s and 1930s here. Today, the harmonica, which only costs about $2, is one of the least expensive musical instruments you can play. And for the musicians in this orchestra, 
one of the best. It's the most amazing feeling to play with so many people with such a good feeling, a good spirit, and a wonderful feeling for each person in the orchestra. I like playing uh, harmonica with a lot of other harmonica players because I almost never get a chance to see so many people together and uh, it just makes me happy to play. Girls like sexy legs like yours. In that case, forget it. Lisa likes sexy legs. Oh, in that case, right, now just get on with the commercial. But I can't say that. I mean, this bike doesn't look at all like John's bike. What's the difference? They both have two wheels, pedals, and a seat. They're both the same. In that case, why don't we just swap bikes? I'm not that stupid. Now just get on with the script. Okay, but if this doesn't work, don't blame me. <gasps> oh, Dylan, now we're going to have to get you cleaned up before we can shoot this thing. Yeah, and Wardrobe is going to be very happy about us ruining this outfit. Nah, they don't mind. It was a yellow shirt anyway. Thanks, John. Oh. Did you see the size of that recipe book the camp director gave old Wiley? It's a survival cookbook, so it's only got one recipe in it. Only one? Must be a long one, then. No, it's pretty short. All you do is chop up the book and eat it. Oh, I guess that's why they call it a survival cookbook. Yeah. That's right. Now, shut up and eat. Ha <laughs> 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 ha! Of me, hearties. Hold on the mainsail. And you, ha, walk the plank. I can't. What do you mean you can't? It's simple. You just put one foot in front of the other and you walk on out the plank, you fall in, and the sharks eat you. Ha, ha. I know it sounds simple, but I've never been able to balance properly on narrow boards. Oh, don't be ridiculous. Here, let me show you. You do it like this. You walk on out, you put one foot in front of the other. See? It's easy as can be. But it gets bouncy at the end. Ah, nothing to it. You're right. It is a bit bouncy out here. <laughs> John Joseph. I was hoping I'd be able to give you straight A's this year. Oh, that's okay, miss. I don't mind if you bent ones. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I thought. So I bent a few of them into F's. <laughs> Take that home to mother. <laughs> oh, there you are, Tina, dear. We're home. Hi. Don't you think you've been gone a long time? Well, we have been gone a bit longer than expected, but we'll pay you extra for babysitting, don't worry. It's not the money. It's just that six years is a little long. I mean, I've already got to change schools for the kids. Oh, well, I'm sorry, Tina, dear, but you know how time flies when you're having fun. By the way, are you available to sit next Saturday, dear? Wyatt on the set, please. Stand by. Lights. Camera. Action. <laughs> Wheels. Since the dawn of mankind, they've been the way to get around. We're now proud to present a better way to get around. Better because finely tuned racing wheels, drop handlebars, smooth competition tires, exciting brakes, Easy change gearing, quick remove racing chain, posture molded seat, and exciting dynamic two tone color. Sound good? It's better. See it. Buy it. Cut! Rinse it! Exciting brakes, 
but my brakes don't work. John, that's what makes them so exciting. <laughs> gotcha. What's Violet with so many cans of tomato juice? Oh, that. Well, that's in case the skunks old Violet keep putting in our stew. Get her before she gets in. You're not serious. Oh, yeah? Hey, Violet. What are all those jars of tomato juice for? Oh, they're in case the little critters I put in your stew get me before I get them. Now shut up and eat. Yes, Job's a tenement. Miss! Yes, John, what does it speak? Is teaching a job just like any other? Well, yes, I suppose it is, John. Then tell me, if you're in a restaurant and you get a lousy meal, whose fault is it? The meals or the chef who cooked it? Why, the chef who cooked it, of course. That's what I thought. So if a ship goes off course, hits rocks and sinks, who's to blame, the ship or the navigator? Why, the navigator, of course, John. Exactly. So if a kid is doing lousy and failing in school, I guess it must be the teacher's fault. Of course! <laughs> no! For the last time, Jocelyn, no, you cannot wear makeup and spiked heels. But, Mom! God. Jocelyn, I don't understand why you're always wanting to look older. Take a look at your brother. He's a year older than you are, and he's perfectly content to wear jeans and a T-shirt. He isn't always complaining about wanting to look older. Yeah, but what boy would want to wear a three-piece suit anyway? <laughs> it's been sold! It's been sold! Some stupid person actually bought my bike. Oh, oh, Daisy. Daisy. Hey, how much did we get? Mm. 75 bucks. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, there you are. Here's the bill for that commercial you kids shot. There you go. Bill? Oh. $750? What? Where are we going to get $750? Oh. Jocelyn! No, oh, my father's gonna kill me for spending his money. You got us into this mess, so you get us out. Just because it costs more than we made, don't blame me. Oh, no, come on, people, please. Oh, why? <laughs> Definitely not fit. <laughs> Just the truth and your commercial, Jocelyn. <laughs> Did you find out who bought my bike? Of course I did. Oh, yeah, who? Yeah, oh, Lisa did. Lisa bought my old rack? <laughs> no, no, no. Lisa bought the bike we advertised. I couldn't sell your bike, John. Uh -oh. That would be dishonest. <laughs> Wait a minute. Did I hear you correctly? You sold Lisa my nice, new, European 12-speed bike? Yep. For 75 bucks. That's a $600 <laughs> bike. I know. And Lisa's really happy about this bargain, Jocelyn. She even gave me a big kiss. Oh, my father is going to kill me. Don't worry, Jocelyn. You can just use John's bike. He'll That's never know the difference. Yeah, oh here God. it is. Which one, Jocelyn? Look, the book got two wheels, pedals, a seat, dropped handlebars, maybe a little rust here and there. Since Don't Look Now went on the air, the sale of television sets has increased dramatically. I mean, my mother sold ours, Tina sold hers, Adam sold his, my next-door neighbor sold theirs, and my granddad sold his, and his dog. Well, actually, his dog really liked the show, but granddad said it was too bad for him. Major funding for Don't Look Now was provided by the Mabel Louise Riley Foundation, a Boston-based foundation with special interest in children and youth. 
Additional funding was provided by public television stations and the Corporation for Public Broadcasting. Thank you.